The Nintendo DS was a treasure trove for JRPGs and unique experiences, and is one of my most favorite systems, right up there with the original NES and the PS2. While we did get a decent amount of games out west, the bulk of the more quirky ones are still locked away in Japan. But once again, passionate fans have put in the work and allowed us English speakers to enjoy another hidden gem. Hey there, this is Mega Blade J, and today I will be reviewing Nora and the Time Studio. The Witch of the Misty Forest. Nora and the Time Studio is a turn-based JRPG. It was made and published by Atlas for the Nintendo DS in 2011. This game is very obscure, and it was very hard to find info for it. There's no guides online, and not even a wiki page for it. From what I understand, this was Atlas's answer to the. Altier series. According to what little sources I could find, it even had the director of the Altier series working on this game. In the story, you play as Nora, a young chronomancer in training. Chronomancers are sorcerers who can control time. With this kind of magic, they can make flowers bloom out of season, age grape juice into fine wine in just a few days. And even rewind time for a damaged object back to when it was new. As part of her training, Nora has been sent out on a three-year mission to train and hone her skills. Things become a bit more complicated when the nearby town accuses her of being a witch, mainly due to her living in the woods where an evil witch is said to be. Because of this. The townspeople are afraid and shun her. Now, to complete her training and not be burned at the stake, Nora must keep her magic a secret while using it to make and deliver items to earn the trust of the town. Like the Altier series, this game's story is slower paced and more slice of life. There's no evil overlord or world-ending calamity to overcome. Honestly, I thought without them, the story would be very boring. Surprisingly, without an overlooming threat, I found myself more invested in the individual characters and their stories. Each character is well written, with unique personalities, and were very entertaining to interact with and learn about. Nora is a great main character as well. She's just a sweet girl delivering items, training, and trying to make people happy. It was cool seeing her win people over with her kindness and eagerness to help others. It was a nice change of pace from the typical angst-filled, overdramatic RPGs. The main gameplay consists of getting a request for an item, going out in the field to forage or fight monsters for resources. Then craft or use chronomancy to create and deliver said item. Doing so increases your reputation with the town. Get it high enough, and shops will sell you better weapons and items, as well as open new side quests and areas to forage for material. The foraging system was a pretty fun and unique mechanic. When you go into the field, you'll see random items scattered on the ground. Touching them will either net you an item. Or make you fight an enemy. In the corner of the screen, you'll see icons that can affect how you gather items. They can increase the amount of material collected, switch out your items for new ones, force you to fight an enemy, etc. The effects of the icons are activated by picking up sparkling resources scattered among regular ones. The more non-sparkling items you pick up, the higher level of effect the icons will have. So. If you want to fight a tough foe for experience, pick up the sparkling items last. Once collected, resources can be used to make a variety of things. You can combine items, break them apart to make new base ingredients, or use chronomancy to age or de-age them. While simple, 
The process of finding resources and making new things was surprisingly fun. Along the way, you will gain a ragtag team of adventurers and weirdos. From a warrior in training, obsessed with getting swole, a jerky-loving bum, and the typical green-haired woman with amnesia. When taken into the field, they can help in both combat and foraging. While in combat, they can aid you with a variety of skills. Some can unleash devastating attacks, others heal, and some can steal items. Each character has skills that can be used outside of combat as well. For example, one character will increase the amount of rare rocks and metals you collect, while bringing another to a shop will allow you access to rarer items to buy. The more you forage and fight with these characters, the more their trust in you goes up. As their trust increases, more of their backstory and side quests will be unlocked. When you reach Max Affinity, you will unlock their final quest and ending. The art was made by the same person who worked on the Etrian Odyssey series. The art style is cute, with characters that have very expressive faces. The battle sprites are well animated, and the backgrounds are bright, colorful, and are very detailed. The music is absolutely fantastic and was done by the composer of the Wild Arm series. It uses violins to create some smoothing melodies and kick-ass battle music. And I gotta tell ya, I love me some freaking violins. While I had fun with this game, I did have some issues. Combat can be a bit difficult at the beginning. Enemies hit very hard, armor and weapons are stupid expensive, and you don't have the many abilities at the beginning of the game. It does get better, but the first few areas will be very rough. Like the Altier games, you have a set time limit. Every action, like making items or foraging, uses a set amount of time. Once the three years are up, the ending you get depends on your chronomancy levels and affinity with certain characters. I'm the kind of gamer that likes to take his time, talk to everybody, and get as many items and side quests done as possible. So the time limit was very annoying to me. Every party member has their own ending that requires their trust to be at least a level 80. To do this, you're going to need to keep them in your party for dang near the bulk of the game. And due to that pesky time limit, you'll only get one or two endings per playthrough. I was not aware of this and switched out my party members frequently to see all their stories and wound up missing out on everyone's ending. I suppose this was to encourage replaying the game, but I did find it a little annoying I couldn't get everyone the first time around. After you beat the game, there is a new game plus mode that does bring over your money and pets, but nothing else. It would have been nice if it carried over your affinity levels and items. That way you had it like a head start in seeing the other characters' endings. Once again, I wasn't a fan of having a time limit, but overall, I really did enjoy Nora and the Time Machine. It had a bright, colorful art style, simple but fun combat, a light-hearted slice-of-life story, and a robust item creation system. The game was only released in Japan, but there is an English fan translation online. If you want a physical copy, may want to get it now as the price is starting to rise. It ranges from 40 for just the game to 100 for the full box. If you're a fan of the Altier series or enjoy RPGs with slower, more slice of life storylines, then I suggest giving this game a try. This has been Mega Blade J. I've reached over 990 subscribers, almost to 1,000. Once again, thank you all. If you enjoyed the review, leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel for more reviews, playthroughs, and my poor attempts to entertain you all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next mission. Bye.